take the boards to, that you're going to use to make your case, and run your molding on the edge of the boards. Saw it 3 16 so saw it off, and then build your case, and then light them and stick them back on. That way, you don't have to worry about what's going on underneath here. You don't have to worry about where your end board is ending and how to make this funny angle. You can just straight miter like a picture frame and, and glue it on. And the other good thing is you've got a couple tries because it's not integral with the case. I don't want to run my dado all the way out to there. Because if I run my dado all the way out and slide this all the way out, it's going to be a little <coughs> hole where I'll cut my molding away. So I want my dado to stop short of the furthest projection on this, this piece. So what I do is I pull it out. Let's say I've got my dado stopped about half, <coughs> about a half an inch before here. I could, I could stop at a quarter inch before there if I wanted to. So I, I bring this out and I mark just against my, my board here. I mark that because I'm going to have to cut the bottom of this off so it can continue to slide forward. Once I get my case clamped up and so forth, I want to make sure that this stuff's all going to read straight across. So, whatever my height of my data on the inside of this is, it needs to be the same here, it needs to be the same over here. So in other words, these dividers need to line up on horizontal lines and match each other. So what I do is I'll, I'll cut my dados in my side, in this case I'll so I did it with my dado blade and a sled on my saw. So I've got these, these dados in here. I make a little spacer and I just cut it so that it fits in here. And it just comes up against the bottom edge of my dado. It's just a guide. And transfer the marks onto this guy. So you know that this height is the same as this height, which means that your drawer blades are going to be parallel with your base. Because this height is this height, and this height is this height. <clears throat> so I'll take my shooting board, and I'll just you know, clean this up until it sits just perfectly flush with the bottom, and I'll transfer this again and do the same thing over. So that way, you make sure that you do these all at once, and you lay them on all at once, and you know that this stuff is parallel to the base board. Just make sure that you clamp this up, because your dovetail sometimes will drift apart a little bit, and you want to make sure that everything's tight in your market, otherwise when you clamp it together, you're going to change it. I'm a strong believer in using reference points from what you what really exists, not what theoretically exists, but what you really have in front of you. Because a lot of this business is accommodating little discrepancies here and there. And um, if I get my case glued up and it's solid and it's square and everything, that's a given. I like to have things that are you know, static reference points that aren't going to change. <laughs> Put it there with some high glue, cut it off, shave it, done. We have a dado in here that's as deep as our molding. So this piece in here theoretically comes projects in as far as our molding. So if we miter this stuff and, and, and pull it forward, it should miter with our molding. So what I do is, I will, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn this upside down in a second, and I'm gonna just cut in 45 from either side of my dado. And that's gonna correspond to ooh, the 45s we'll cut in this. So it's gonna be essentially two picture frames, each wrapping around an alternate. This is upside down. There's my little bit of molding. And there's the thickness of my top. And I have a dado in there. What I'm going to do is cut this to 45, cut this to 45, and I'll have a straight piece across the bottom. Right in the middle. A little Japanese saw. Just connect the dots. I'll just connect the dots. Yeah, so it's going to be there. <coughs> Two. That.
<laughs> Thank you. It all comes out in the end. So I mark that just with a little chisel cut. That's little laughter in the wind. So I'm just going to cut this in. Tap, tap. You always need to brace your hand against something to get the control that you need. So you've got to have a reference point. You know, no matter how you do it, you've got to, you've got to have some break as well as some gas. And uh, that way, you can get a nice control cut. Take a chisel, and I'll chop in here. Take it down to the proper depth. I like to use a long chisel here too because you can line it up. I call it an old woman's tooth, it's just it's got this one tooth there in the mouth. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, and uh, so you just, this is a tapered wedge. I made this about 30 years ago. Uh, tapered wedge and just sits in here and I set this to the right depth. And just <clears throat> mark your orientation. something like this, you always want to work from the center of your cut, out towards the edges. So I'm within of an eighth of an inch of the front. You do have to be in the middle too, don't you? It helps. because it's a very controlled cut. It will uh, just gives you a little burst of energy and then it stops. Well, how far? This shape, the shape, so I'll just cut that back. <laughs> Size yep, that's what I'm doing right now. Yep. I forgot to I forgot to let it stick out the drawer front. I won't even start to shape these until I trace them from the drawers. No, so it won't uh, won't be that critical yet. So as long as we project them forward quarter inch, half inch, whatever. True it up so that my drawer sets in there just the way I want it. And you take those dividers, a lot of times I'll use a piece of carbon paper underneath it. Because sometimes these marks are hard to see. Not sometimes. They're always hard to see. So let's say I had index that somehow. Set that there, set this for my projection, and run this like so.
this. There's my actual final draw blade projection. 